Hey everybody, it's Lee from Lazarus Homestead and I am doing another video for a dinner and I got a pork shoulder picnic is what they're calling it. I got a very small one because I we don't eat a lot of ham but I wanted something different that day that I was at the grocery store. Um, this is 2.69 per pound, so $2.69 a pound, and it weighs 4.89 pounds. So I am gonna, it says fully cooked, water added. So this isn't something that has to roast for hours and hours. So that's gonna be for dinner. Lazaric Homestead. Real people. Real living. Hey everybody. So I am going to take this pork shoulder picnic. And I'm it's already fully cooked, it says. So we're just gonna get it in the oven to warm it. And then towards the little bit end, I will sprinkle it with pineapple juice, courtesy of Crazy Irish. She told me to do that with some brown sugar. We were on a live stream and she's, I asked her, I'm like, help. I asked them, I'm like, I really don't ever cook hams. I think I've done it one time in my whole life. So, and I did that in a crock pot. So... They gave me some good ideas with some pineapple juice and some brown sugar. So that's what I'm going to do. She's never steered me wrong yet. She's pretty good cooking. She shows me some of the stuff she makes and I'm just drooling every time I look at the picture. So I'm going to go by what she says on this one. So I'm going to stick this in this pan and it's a 4.89 pounds so that's looking pretty good guys so I'm gonna stick that in there just rinse off my hands and uh, we're gonna warm this up in a 350 degree oven for a little while and then towards the end I'm gonna take this pineapple juice that I took out of a couple cans with some brown sugar and we will glaze it over. It's a win-win because the pineapple, Sierra loves pineapple, so I opened up a couple cans of chunks so she can eat the pineapple and we can use this to glaze over the ham. See you back here guys. Okay, apparently there is a white netting on here, and I had to read the directions because it says you need to remove that. Again, I had never seen that before. So, it says before cooking, remove it. So, let's see what I can do here to get this netting off. It's weird. I had never seen a ham with netting on it. Huh. I don't see. I can't get that part off, so we're gonna cut it. I don't want to leave any on the ham in case that's a boo boo or a bad thing. Hmm. I have never seen a ham with netting on it. Y'all, I'm not an experienced cook like some of you guys. <laughs> a lot of these things that I'm trying are new for the first time because I'm coming out of my comfort zone and I'm trying new things and a lot of that has to do with some wonderful people that I've met on YouTube that have said, hey, you know, try this, try that. And I was always so picky with my food 
that I kind of just cooked the same things over and over again all the time. I never tried anything new, and I'm doing that now, so I want to thank you all for that. So I think I got the whole thing of netting off. We shall see, right? So that's that. Okay, so, oh boy, my brown sugar is getting hard, guys. I might have to move it to a different part of the kitchen. God, why do I not have any space in my kitchen for this stuff? So, I'm going to add some brown sugar. I'm hoping I'm doing this right, guys. To my pineapple juice. Wow, these are, this is hard. Huh. Well, we're going to loosen it up in the pineapple juice, I guess. So we're going to stir this all up. I'm sure it's going to taste good. Because I just uncovered the um, ham. And Crazy had said to put a tin, you know, a cover over it, so I did that, and oh my god, it looks beautiful after just an hour. Hmm. Crazy Irish, you should be a chef. Everything you do that you've shown me, I've just wanted to eat it all up. So, we're going to take out the ham. I just took the cover off it. Oh my. Beautiful. Look at that, guys. Ah, smells so good. And I'm not a big ham eater. I'm going to be honest. I'm not. But every once in a while, I like a little bit of ham. You know, like chunk it up. I don't like spiral ham. But I do like the chunks so I can cut it off. And, and uh, I'm going to just drizzle this right over the top and the sides. Oh, that's going to be good. So this is pineapple juice from the can and then um, brown sugar mixed in it. Simple, you know, because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it down with the meaty side down so that... Um, I can get, oh, I gotta shut my oven door because my butt's hitting into it, guys. I have a small kitchen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it around so that it lays in the juice. I'm learning as I go, guys. But my, oh my, you know what? Maybe I should add some more, uh, let me see if I can get some more brown sugar in there. Oh my, yeah, this is getting hard. Why is it getting hot? Oh, I think the cat's coming in. Let me go and shut the door. Yep. The cat was out on the porch. <laughs> so, we're going to get some more brown sugar. Maybe I can make it a little thicker. I think that's what I remember Crazy Irish saying. To make it like crispy and crunchy on the outer part. So I'm assuming this is what I got to do. But I'm trying. My goodness, it smells delicious, though. Crazy Irish. So we're going to bring this brown sugar in here and try to thicken it up. I put a lot of pineapple juice. So I probably need a lot of brown sugar to thicken it up. I don't know. I'm sure once it starts cooking again with this in there, it's going to, like, crystallize. Oh, hold on. If y'all don't go and uh, check out Crazy Irish's channel, she uh, she don't post a lot of videos of her food that she makes, but she does send me a lot of pictures of it. And oh my God, every single time, my mouth is watering, watering, just watering. She has some beautiful pictures of food that she makes. Um, it looks to me. Like she actually doesn't rush when she cooks, like sometimes I do. I like recipes that are easy and I can kind of rush through it. <laughs> but when she shows me her stuff, oh my God, can I just say, 
It looks like she spends hours on this stuff. She takes the time. Anyway, um, I'm gonna... Oh, I'm over here not showing you. But this is what it's gonna look like, and I'm gonna put it back in the oven now, and hopefully, like she said, it'll like crisp up. I should have used the um, crushed up pineapple, but I didn't. So we're just gonna stuff this back in the oven. And then I'm going to start making the, um, I am making, I'm going to show you. I had back sealed some of the Hungry Jack Cheesy Scallop Potatoes. So I'm going to open up two of those because I find that one is not enough for us. Especially if they want to have some the next day. And I'm going to make it in here in the oven. Oh, so I'm going to need to, uh. I'm going to need to move this around in here. Hopefully both of these can fit. Yeah, I have a tiny oven that's really like 20, it's called a 24 inch oven. And I, can, I can't really get big, big pans in there. Let's see how this will fit. Let's see, I might have to do two separate racks and my racks are so small, guys. Let's see here. Sorry, sorry see if I can get the door shut. Okay, so I'm going to have to do two racks. I'll bring you back. Okay, so two boxes of the Hungry Jack scallop. Cheesy scallop. Cheesy scallop. These are some of the first ones I ever vacuum sealed, so I'm going to use these and rotate my stuff out. That's why I love doing them in jars, because then I can reuse these jars for something else. Alright, and now I'm going to put the sauce mix in here. Put some water boiling in my kettle. Because it says to add uh, three quarters cup boiling water for each package. So Hopefully my thing will hold that much water. If not, I'll have to do two separate waters. We'll get there, people. We'll get there. I, I started <clears throat> back sealing in jars and, and a miler bags and things like that when I first started learning how to prep things and put things away. So now I'm going to try to start using some of this stuff a little more often than I do. Um, what's the point of storing it if we're not going to use it and replace it? And you do. Every time you store things, you need to rotate your stuff out. Use your oldest. Replace it with newer. Like, see, now this I can reuse because that just had a baggie in it. All right. And then boiling water, butter. So... Two tablespoons of butter times two would be four. So one, two, three, four. It's gonna be like almost the whole stick. So we're just gonna do it in chunks. I've never made the scalloped potatoes in this pan, but I'm finding that I really like this pan. It cooks up a lot of things nice. It does rice nice, it does uh, chicken nice, it just does a lot of things nice. Um, now I gotta wait for the water. I'm gonna put the milk in right now because I'm gonna need this measuring cup for other stuff. For my water, honestly. Alright, so I added a little less water because I added a little more milk. I had those two little cartons. Um, these little milk boxes and I wanted to use them up because I had to open up two But I only needed half of one and one full one So I added the rest of the milk and I'm just going to decrease the water It's all cooked the same We're gonna mix this all up. I'll add a little bit more water going to rehydrate and it's going to cook in the sauce. So I'm going to 
Just mix it all up. Get all the sauce mixed in there so it's not clumping on certain pieces of potato. And it says bake uncovered for 25 minutes until poten potatoes are tender and lightly browned and then let stand for 10 minutes. So we're gonna get all this covered up. That way Add just a tad bit more water, just in case. All right. Okay, we're going to get this in the oven. So, because my oven is so small, guys, I had to take out this one for a little bit. So for 25 minutes, I'm just going to let it sit here. I'm going to I'm gonna drizzle it again. I'm going to let the uh, potatoes cook. And then I'll put this back in when the potatoes are done. Because I don't have room for both in my oven, unfortunately. This is very high, so when I put the, um, the rack higher, it hits the top, and it will be too close to the top element for the potatoes. So, we're going to work with what we have. I'm going to lift this up, because this is fully cooked, remember. So it only needs to be warmed up. So I'm going to lift, lift this up, get some of those juices at the bottom. Let it sit here. I'm going to leave it covered to keep the heat in until I can put it back in the oven just to warm it up a little more after the potatoes are done. And we'll bring you all back. All right, it smells delicious in here, guys. So we're going to take the... We're going to take the uh, potatoes out of the oven, see what they look like. Yeah. I'm going to leave them like that so they have some little juice because they're going to sit for a little while. And, oops, let's drop my pot holder. All right, we're going to stuff the... Uh, Ham back in there while I heat up some veggies. Probably gonna put up a cucumber. I'm thinking some corn to go with this. I'm not sure. We're gonna look and see. So I'm gonna put that back in there. Bring you back. All right, guys. This is the ham. And um. Just splattered all over my stove my broth from the ham here. I was trying to pick it up and it slipped and fell back in the pan and then it splattered. But let's see. This is the so hopefully Lazarus will be home soon. And I made a couple cans of corn. So I'm gonna cut up some ham here for Todd. He said he wanted some. Of course, Sierra said no. Now keep in mind, this is a very small one. I think this was like four pounds. So, I, we don't eat a lot of ham. <laughs> so, I didn't want to buy a huge one. But it was fully cooked already. So, it just needed to warm up in the oven. So I'm going to let it rest a little bit. Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh yum. Look at that. Yum. This ham tastes fabulous. Fabulous. So I want to say thank you, Crazy Irish, and everybody in chat that helped me with the idea because I didn't know what I was doing with a ham. Yum! Okay, Chris is eating now. It always has to zoom in and out and in and out and in and out. Okay, you're clear. I'm going to let you chew and then you can tell how you like your food. Good. Is it good? Oh, yeah. 
Ain't nothing wrong with a little swine in the diet. <laughs> I've never made a whole ham, I don't think, since we've been together. I don't, I can't remember. I, but I don't, no, it's always half ones. Half ones? Or ham steaks, the ham, ham steaks. steaks. Well, yeah. no, you just spiral ham. Long oh, time yeah, ago. that spiral ham. I don't like it. I don't like spiral hams. I like the big chunks. I'm a chunk person. She likes chunky. I like it chunky. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. All right.